Shabbat Shalom. Thank you all for joining us for our Torah service today. We greatly appreciate you tuning in. If you are watching us on Facebook, go ahead and like this if you would, please, because I know you're going to like it in the end. So just go ahead and like it right off the bat. Go ahead and share it. Start a watch party as well, if you would, please. That helps get the gospel, get the word out to everyone. They're showing you the uh, links, or not the links, but the sites where you can find us all over the internet. You can find us on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook, at some point in time, go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Click the bell for the notifications. That way you can be notified every time we go live or we upload a video. If you're watching on YouTube, go over to Facebook. And again, comment and share and like. Because every time Facebook and YouTube, they see these things, they help push the video even more. They're saying, hey, look, people's liking this. Let's let others see it as well. But we're also on Twitter. If you have a Twitter account, you can follow us. LinkedIn, SoundCloud's our podcast. Instagram and Telegram. So you can find us all over the internet, but the number one place, you see it there on that little tab, uh, laptop, is olivetreemessianic.org. Olivetreemessianic.org. That is our website. That's where we put all of our announcements, our uh, previous videos, upcoming readings, everything you need, pictures who we are, when we got started, who I am, uh, frequently asked questions, you name it, everything is on there. I'm not bragging, but we do have one of the best sites out there. Amen? Okay, today's tour portion is number 52. 53. Yeah, apparently I didn't update that on this one, but I'm glad Daniel caught that. See, that's why I, I was so off. It is number 53, Ha'azinu, which means give ear. And you see there the readings on your screen. Uh, Chris will lead us through that. So go ahead, if you're watching at home, and get your Bibles out, get your Siddur, your prayer book out, and be ready to follow along. So, Chris, Stephen, if you guys would, please. As we uh, begin our time together, um, would you indulge me for just a moment? Father, I come to you because we're in a season of your Moedim. Today is your appointed Moedim. And it's a time of joy, but I've heard so many this morning that have talked about how the week is... It's had some interesting and tough and challenging things in it. And I know it is the evil one trying to steal our joy. So Father, as you unite us with yourself through this time of prayer and focus on your word and in our time of teaching to follow, Father, I pray that you revive our joy rejuvenate it, draw it back, that we may go forth celebrating you, that our countenances be lifted up, that our faces shine anew with your Shekinah. Father, we may be refreshed and revived, that the world may see a joy that they've never had, but that their heart desires the joy that can only be found in you and a relationship with you through your atonement, through your forgiveness to make us who we are to be. Father, this is your time. This is your place. These are your children. And we are here to worship you. In Yeshua's name. Amen. We're going to begin with the Matavu this morning. Your abundant kindness is a statement in the midst of the Matavu. Your, that's a capital Y. 
That's referring to Adonai. Your abundant kindness. You know, we try to find in this world moments of joy. We try to share moments of happiness, but that's all they are. But if you want something eternal, if you want something everlasting, if you want something real, it has to be His abundant kindness. And you notice it's not just His kindness, but it's abundant. It's more than enough. It's overflowing. We can never find the end of it. And it says, O oh Lord, through Your abundant kindness, I will enter Your house. Isn't that what we've been celebrating? Isn't that what we announced the King is coming? Isn't that what we proclaimed? That it is His gift, His atonement. And it's so abundant. And it overflows. And it wells up and becomes a, a wellspring. Yet the enemy is always trying to dam it up. The enemy is always trying to divert it and steal it away from us. The enemy is always trying to make us compare ourselves one to another. Say, so, oh, well, they, they've got more than I do. Why can't I have what they've got? But you know what? It's a lie. It's a lie. His abundant kindness is so abundant. So, so, excuse me, so stinking abundant that there's more than enough for any and all of us and for everybody throughout all of creation. But we lose sight of that. I lost sight of that this week. Some of you have confessed to me, you lost sight of that this week in the midst of the season He gave us to be the most joyous season. So as we join our hearts together in the Matavu, let that be the guiding force for us. His abundant kindness. Because that's what it's all about. If you're following along in the Messianic Sabbat Sadur is page 40, but we also have it up on the screen. Matuhalecha Yaakov Mishkinoteka Yisrael Vahani Barokhastecha Avovetecha Es takave el herkol El herkol kachecha Beiratecha Adonai ahavti meon beitecha Umakom mishkan kevodecha Vahani es takave Vekra Evrecha Evrecha Lifne Adonai Osi Vanita Falatilacha Adonai Eid Rahatzon Elohim Baruchastecha how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. In awe, I will bow down toward your holy sanctuary. O Lord, I love the house where you dwell and the place where your glory resides. I shall prostrate myself and bow. Bend the knee before the Lord my Maker. As for me, may my prayers to you, O Lord, be at the right time. 
O oh God, in your abundant righteousness, answer me with the truth of your salvation. Amen. If you will, please rise. As we join our hearts together in the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Leolam Ba'ed Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, b'kol levavcha, u'v'kol nafshecha, u'v'kol me'adecha, v'hayu haravarim ha'ele, asher anok hi matzavka hayom alavavecha, v'shinan tam lavanecha, v'dibarta bam, v'shivtecha b'vetecha, Uvlektaka vaderek ufshekvaka uv kumacha. Ukshartam leot al yadeka vahayula tota fot bain enecha. Uktavtam amazuzot beteka uvish areka. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. Amen. <laughs> shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. You know, when we learn about that abundant kindness and we begin to live by that abundant kindness, it's much easier to teach that to our children. It's much easier to make it as something that becomes a part of our conversation, whether we're sitting, whether we're rising whether we're walking down the street or whether we're in our homes. And it is definitely what helps us in the way that God created us to love our neighbor and ourself. You know, we say that, don't we? Love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But I look out at a world of a lot of people that don't love themselves. And it's any wonder they can't love their neighbors. God saw something in each one of us worth loving. God created something in each one of us worth loving. And he says, if you'll let my abundant kindness flow to you, you'll love yourself. And you'll have enough love to love your neighbor too. Because you'll want to. Because you'll see that they were made in my image, according to the Lord. God said, I have made you in my image. If nothing else, there's something worth loving them for. Because we see God's image. And there is nothing like Him, is there? There is nothing like our God. That's the reason why when we open the ark, we say the Ankamoka. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, and there is nothing like your works. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion is throughout all generations. The Lord reigns, the Lord has reigned, the Lord will reign forever and ever. The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. Ein kamocha va Elohim Adonai 
Vain Kamasecha Malchutaka Malkut Kolola Mim Umel Shaltaka Bakol Dova Dor Adonai Melech Adonai Mahalach Adonai Imloch Leolam Vaed Adonai Oz Leamo Yitain Adonai Varech Et Amova Shalom Av Harachamim Heiti vavertzon ha et zion. Tiv ne homot Yerushalayim. Tiv ne homot Yerushalayim. Ki vacha lavad bataknu. Melek el Rambanisa Adon Olamim. Father of mercies, do good in thy will to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, for in you alone do we trust. O King, God exalted and lifted up, Master of the universe. Amen. I'd like to call the old fourth. As our scroll carrier. When the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from you. For from Zion will go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Vayahibin so haron vayomer Moshe Kumo Adonai via futsu hovecha via nusu misa necha mi panecha ki mitzion tetze Torah. Ki mitzion tetze Torah leamo Yisrael bikadushato baruch shenatan Torah Torah baruch shenatan Torah Torah Leamo Yisrael, Bikadushato, Ki Mitzion, Tetze Torah, Ki Mitzion, Tetze Torah, Udevar Adonai, Miarushalayim. Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah. Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah. Leamo Yisrael, Bikadushato.
I'd like to call Kathy to come forward as our reader today. Let us say the blessing for the reading of the Word of God. Baruch et Adonai Hamavorak. Baruch Adonai Hamavorak Leolam Vahed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bakarpanu Mikol Haamim. Vanatan Lanu et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai No Tain HaTorah. Amen. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all people and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. As was mentioned, we're on Torah portion 53 this week. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 32. It is the whole chapter of chapter 32. Our Hof Torah reading is found in 2 Samuel, the 22nd chapter, and it's that whole chapter as well. Our Brit Hadashah reading is found in the book of Romans. Chapter 10, verse 17 through chapter 11, verse 12. Then chapter 12, verses 19 and chapter 15, verses 9 and 10. Now the meaning of this portion is give ear. Give ear. It's kind of an interesting way of saying listen up, isn't it? It's kind of an interesting way of saying Shema. Hear. Give ear. Why, as we go from Yom Kippur into Sukkot, must we give ear? Let us look at that. Kathy, if you will, come forward. We're going to first look in Deuteronomy chapter 32, and she's just going to read the first four verses of chapter 32, the Song of Moses. Ha'azino ha'shamayim ba'ade bara v'tishma ha'aretz imrafi kamatar lakhi tizel ketal imrati kishirim el desha v'kiv kirv vivim el esav kishem adonai ikra havu gadol lelotenu hazor tamim pa'alo ki kol darkav mishpat el emuna. The ain't avel zedek yeshar who. Hmm. Let us now, in the English from the tree of life. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. Let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching trickle like rain, and my speech distill like dew, like gentle rain on new grass, like showers on tender plants. For I will proclaim Adonai's name, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, blameless is his work. Indeed, all his ways are just. God of faithfulness, without iniquity, righteous and upright is he. Now when you see that in the original, it looks like two columns. Because each thing in the Song of Moses is kind of counterparted. And it's going back and forth. When it starts off, it says, Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. Let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teachings trickle like rain, my speech distill like dew. Like gentle rains on new grass, like showers on tender plants. For I will proclaim Adonai's name, ascribe greatness to our God. As you go through the whole song, it's bouncing back and forth. You know, there's something about song, isn't there? 
Songs have a way of speaking to us. Scientists have proven that in order to sing, we actually use all of our brain. Whereas in order to speak, we only use one side of our brain. It's the reason why stroke victims who lose the ability to talk can be learned to t- talk to sing monotones so that they can talk again. Because they're using their whole brain. Something about a song, it bounces back and forth in our brain. And it sticks with us. We try and try to learn the Scriptures and memorize it. And we try and try, but if we ever put a little song to it, it seems to stick with us a lot quicker, doesn't it? There's something about a song. It's exactly what this song starts off with. It's like rain. It's like dew. It's like that rain and it's that shower. You know, religions of this world are designed to homogenize. Designed to make us all one. We talk about being one, but the God of Scripture presents it in such a different way. He says, I knew you before you were knitted together in your mother's womb. I know the plans I have for you. I've gifted you. I've made you unique. I've made you special. Just like the rains come down on a pine tree and an oak tree, just the same. But they don't both produce acorns, do they? They don't, both don't produce pine nuts, do they? He said, it's just like the grass of the field. How many of you have the same identical grass growing in your yard that I have in my yard? You don't because I've got a bunch of different junk growing in my yard. (laughs) A lot of different kinds. Some of it stays green way past the frost. Some of it turns brown as soon as the frost comes. But it all has different purposes. And as the song of Moses gets started and he goes and he says, the world's going to try to homogenize you. He's going to try to tempt you with these gods that are non-gods. They're not gods at all because they're just going to try to lump you all together and make you fearful. It says, just like we prayed in our liturgy, our God is a God of abundant kindness. Our God is a God that knows us, has created us, and He is worth worshiping. He is worth adoring. He is worth honoring because He's made you in His image. But He is so huge. He's had to make all of us because not a single one of us can encompass His image. And He's put us together like a body, each one with His purpose. He's building us together with a, as a house and each stone with its purpose. And it's going to support different things. It's going to have different functions. That's the God we serve. That's the God we know because He is a great God. Hear heavens. Listen, earth. God will rain down and He will nourish you and He will cause you to grow into what you're to be. He will cause you to produce. Because if it wasn't for rain, we can plow, we can plant, we can sow. We can even try to supplement with water. But you know God's creation knows the difference between the water you give it, even if you give it stored rainwater, as opposed to the rain that He's providing at that moment. The the plant knows. And the plant responds differently. And if you want a good produce for the season, it requires God sending 
His rain, His showers to refresh at the right moment. We can't supplement it with that water of another religion. It can do something. It can bring out a form of spirituality. But it's not going to bring about what God intended for your life. And Moses is commanded by God to say, Listen, heavens, and listen, earth. All of creation, listen up to this. Unless it is the reign of God, you're going to be led astray. And don't be surprised whenever the produce isn't what it should have been. Wow. Wow. And then... We're told to go live in a sukkah with holes in the roof so when it rains, it falls down on us after we just read this portion. Makes it a little bit more bearable to sit in that sukkah when it's raining. (laughs) Because it's reminding us what a mighty God. I can't supplement you with anything else. Because at the right time, in the right moment, you will nourish. That's what I need to worship. That's the reason when you call, I need to respond. When you say praise me in this way, that's going to be the very best way to praise you. I can't do it like someone else. I have to do it like you created me because I'm that part of your image, God. And I hear you. And I don't want to go, I don't want to go whoring after the religion of this world that is trying to make me just like them. I want to go after the truth that makes me like God. Because I am created in His image and I want to pursue Him and no other God. Because I know when I pursue those other gods, there's consequences. And if you don't If you don't know that, finish reading Psalms 32 because it's a part of the song. But that's not the only place we see it. We see it throughout Scripture and we saw it also in our Hof Torah. So Kathy, would you come back up? And in 2 Samuel chapter 22, would Would you you read the first four verses of the opening of David's song? David spoke to Adonai the words of the song in the day that Adonai delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, Adonai is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock. In him I take refuge, my shield, my horn of salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. You saved me from violence. I called upon Adonai, worthy of praise, and I was rescued from my enemies. In the middle of that song, he also says, He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of mighty waters. He delivered me from my powerful enemies. For those who hated me, for, those, for they were much stronger than me. He goes on and he finishes up his psalm. And I love this part. Because he, he gets one of those... Uh, Daniel, what is it where it, the music goes up? Crescendos. He crescendos. And he gets the peak of the crescendo with this. Adonai lives! And blessed be the rock. Exalted be God. The rock of my salvation. There's exclamation points all throughout that. That is the peak of that crescendo. He starts off and he's he's praising God and then he says, they've chased me, they've beat me down. And he gets in the middle of it and he says, but God reached down and He grabbed... Even though they were stronger than me, God saved me. And he ends up praising Adonai. Something about that music. That music that says... 
Oh, things are great. And then the world comes in and says, Oh, but they're bad. But God is still God and He's on His throne. But He's just not moving like we want Him to move and need Him to move right now. He's not dead. He's alive. And He is on His throne. And He will be exalted. So when the world's taking you on this song that's going back and forth, say, oh no, I'm going to use all of it. And I'm going to remember, God is God. And I am not. And if I want to be all that I have the potential of being, all that was put into me from the beginning, I must follow Adonai. There is no other. I will never be everything I'm supposed to be because I'm supposed to be the image of God and I can't because I'm, I'm too small. My brain is too infinite. No, too finite. <laughs> We think our brains are infinite because we think we know it all, but we don't. And as big as some people's hearts are, it's not near as big as the heart of God. So whenever the song of this world begins to play and is trying to pull me back and forth, I'm going to say, no, the side of praise is where the crescendo ends. In both songs... The end of it, it works up to the fact God is God and I will praise Him. I will worship and adore Him. I will exalt Him. It doesn't matter who you are. Turn with us to the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. Kathy, would you read for us verses 17 through 19? The faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Messiah. But I say, have they never heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out into all the earth and their words to the end of the world. But I say, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation, and with a nation empty of understanding, I will vex you. Hmm. Did you catch all of that? Didn't Moses start out? saying that he was going to have the earth listen? Didn't David proclaim for everybody to listen as well when he sang his song? The words have gone out there. We're without excuse. Matter of fact, one of my favorite verses, Romans 1.20, says his divine nature, His holy power have clearly been seen out of what has been created so that no man is without excuse. Why? Because the psalmist repeatedly tells us all of creation sings the praise of God. Our Messiah even said if we keep our mouth shut, the rocks will cry out with praise. It's not the fact that we've not heard. It's the fact we have chosen to be less than we have the potential of being. We have chosen to try to homogenize with the world. We've chosen to follow a religion that tries to fit us into a certain form. When God says, no, I want you in me. Isn't that what the Messiah prayed? That we may be one with the Father. Father, make them one just as you and I are one. And God doesn't say, everybody's going to be Moses. Everybody's going to be Elijah. He even had one poor guy be blind for 30-something years for one day. Why has this man been blind? What sin did he do? What sin did his parents do? It was for this day God to be glorified. And then we don't hear anything else but that one day. But oh, what ramifications that one day had 
of Him being exactly what He was created for because He was created for that day. And to this day, we still glory at what God did on that day. I sure am glad that that guy didn't say, well, I'm not like Robert Ritchie. I didn't start a congregation. I don't preach every week. No, when God said, it's time for you to see, He said, all I know, I once was blind, but now I see. Do you want to believe in Him too? Do your part as the Spirit of God equips you and leads you. Now, that's how we dwell with God for all eternity. Being exactly who He created us and designed us to be. You want to be filled with His Spirit? Then you have to submit to His will. His way. His life for you. What a great portion to lead us into celebrating being able to dwell with God for all eternity. Wow. Aren't you glad that God didn't make us puppets and robots just alike? But He said, I want all of me in this world, so I'm choosing all of you. And I'm giving each one of you a little bit of me so that the whole world can see all of me. So I can be jealous, but it's sinful for me to say, I really would love to play the guitar. Because I've said that throughout the years. But man, Leighton can follow them up here so much better than me. He can improvise it like that. It's amazing. So I'm sure glad that he got chose for that, not me. Each one must do his part. And we will begin to see eternity is now and God is dwelling with us now. Because he's given his image and he's living it out through all of us. But we must surrender to him for it. Hmm. Let's thank him for that. doing the closing blessing. Sorry. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. We are days as of old. Amen. You back up one slide there for me. Why is its ways ways of pleasantness and all its paths are peace? 
because we quit warring within ourselves and we become who God created us to be. Hmm. Thank you, Bill, Stephen, and Kathy for helping us today in our Torah portion.